Hey, C Max here. I'm going to do a review on a uh, another pistol. This is a Smith and Wesson Model 422. It's a uh, 22 long rifle. Uh, really nice shooting pistol. Uh, it's kind of different, and we'll get into that in just a second. Let me uh, just go down through the notes on it first. Uh, they manufactured it between 1987 and 1996. It is a low, what they call a low bore uh, axis gun, and I'll explain what that is. That's why it's kind of different, but I also think that's why it shoots so well. Um, it was made in the market marketing response to the popularity of the Ruger Mark One and Mark Two, so they made it to compete with them, you know, on a sales basis. Uh, it is single action. Uh, they made it in a three, four and a half, and six inch barrel length. This is a six inch model. The barrel uh, came threaded. So the thought way back then even was kind of uh, designed for suppressor. And there again, the low bore axis. And the, what they mean by the low bore axis is if you look down the gun here, you can see that normally the barrel would be coming out here. Well, it's here. And I see a dirty spot I got to clean. I just briefly wiped this down. I haven't gone through and cleaned it yet. I usually will after I break it down. But that's what they're talking about by the low bore. So the barrel actually runs down through here. So it does have a slide lock. So if you open it up like a normal weapon, which you would expect, there's no barrel there. There's not much there. Well, here's the here's your chamber that you check is right here. And uh, so that's where you would look. Let me get out of the way so you can see here. There we go. It's got to be better. But that's where you check. There's the ejection port and the chamber all right there. So like I was saying, it is kind of a different gun. But uh, it shoots really well. Um, as you could, you know, see in the, in the video of me shooting there, it's real easy. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, I like it a lot. Uh, magazines. Magazine that came with it was a 12 round. Now, I was finally able to find magazines for it. For whatever reason, magazines are kind of iffy on this. But the magazine replacements are only 10 round because of the magazine ban years ago. So that kind of sucks, even though, uh, you know, it's not an issue at the moment. You, you can't get anything but 10 round. Now, the difference is you can see real, real easy here. The difference is in the follower. As you can see here, the follower is that orange piece that stops right there, well above the cutout tab to lock the mag in. But if you see on the replacement, the magazine follower is down here. Well, there's the other two rounds right there. So, good news is you can get magazines for it. Bad news is they're only 10 rounds instead of 12. Uh, and it took some getting, and they're not really all that cheap. But they are available. They say this is for the Model 41, so search it or search 422. So, but they do work. I was using both of these magazines in the video um, that I was shooting. Uh, it's just a blue slide in a black anodized frame with a, what they call a non-glare finish. Uh, it does have a slide lock and it does have manual safety, thumb safety. All right, six inch barrel. The length of it is 10 inches. The height of it is 5.5 and the width is 1.25. Uh, it weighs 23 and a half ounces. And probably wondering what this is. Well, this is the tool, the, the breakdown tool, the disassembly tool, if you will. And it breaks down pretty easy. Let me, uh... okay, I just wanted to get down this other material before I start breaking down because I'm going to clean it anyway. Um, one thing I failed to mention earlier is the magazine releases right here. You push in on this spot and releases the magazine. So there's a little bit, you know, there's a few things that's kind of different on this gun. 
Um, but it, it really is a sweet shooter. Um, this is the tool. And if most of them are lost, I understand, reading on the internet. So I was fortunate to have this. Especially I bought this from a friend of mine who didn't want it. And I got a good deal on it. And, you know, this tool, I never throw anything away. So this tool was in my little thing in there that, you know, has uh, like flags and uh, the round disc for the revolvers, you know, for new guns and what have you. And it was in it. And then I started looking through it and I never realized this was the tool for this. You can use a spent 22 round cartridge. And what you want to do to break it down is you're going to block this bar. Releases up the tension, pull the pin out. So that's what we're doing right now. The uh, this little bar right there that's oh, poking out is what we're going to block against this and release the tension and then we can pull the nut, the lock nut right out. But that's what this tool is for. So I'm going to use the tool and what you do is you see there, you just cap in on that and you're going to rest it against the, uh, the body here. See that takes the tension off and you probably may have noticed that now this is really loose right here and it slides straight up. The machine part with a little groove in it faces the rear of the weapon. And what it is is just going down here and grabbing the firing pin. So take it out. Then you want to bring this back. Tension off the firing pin, remove your little tool, and then swing the firing pin up and it'll come out. Then the slides just basically come straight up. Lift it from the front back is the best way to do it. And that's really it, unless you want to get in and take the firing pin out, which you would do with this roll pin, and I'm not going to do it. What you would do, you'd punch that out and then the firing pin would come out. But remember, you do that, watch. Watch for any other springs or anything. That's a good one to do inside a bag. You know, a clear plastic bag like we talked about. You get a, you know, get a big one, just do it inside there because if the spring pops, you got it in the, in the bag. Well, that, that's it. As you can see, nothing up here. It's all down here. There's the chamber, hammer, and really this is as far down as you need to take it unless you have a problem. Uh, I would take off the, the grips, but really it's solid right there. So it's not like other weapons and it's open and you can kind of see in there. There's really no point in taking it off at this point. Um, I'll just get down in there with a little brush and we'll clean her up and she'll be ready to go. You can see there's the, the lock nut around the barrel. So it is threaded. You can put a suppressor on it. Supposedly the low bore axis as well is good for mounting a suppressor. Uh, and with it being lower down, it really helps the recoil. What The gun shoots well. It really does. I like it a lot. Okay, we got her cleaned up. So now we're gonna put her back together. Um, in the bolt here, this recess right here is where this is going to go. So basically, we're going to set it on there, slide it back up, and then put the spring back in the assembly to this point to where the pin with the um, machine side towards the rear. So it's going to slip right in there. I can hold. This is why I hate gloves. My, I lose all my dexterity, but I don't like these parts that you don't see getting rusted. So it's going to ride in there on top of that, right in that groove. So that's basically what we're doing. So let's start like this. And did that slot, put it in. Press it down a little bit and she slides forward. Okay. So now slide it back, hold it down against the frame, the top of the thing, hold it down. And we're going to put the spring back in that hole. 
Yeah, it's probably easier said than done. All right. Halfway there. You need to hold it and keep pressure down just so this stays on the frame because it just tends to want to pop up and everything gets out of a line. So now what we'll need to do is we need to use a little tool again. And I'm going to put it right there. Fantastic. Then slide it forward. And you can see there's the slot. that our pin there needs to slide too. Remember the machined outside towards the rear. So we pop her or we'll pop her straight in. Like that. You see she sits flush. Now let's pull back, remove the tool, and slide it forward. And that is it. The tool makes it easy. Basically, it's the length of the cartridge, but it just gives you the tab to hold on to it to get it in and out. So, only one difficulty that you have if you're using a spent cartridge is obviously you don't have this little grab tab. So, other things you could do. Take a spent cartridge, hemostats, hold it, you could hold it in that way. Um, you could solder a little handle onto one and just make your own tool. Uh, what I would probably do if you were going to go that far, though, is take the spent case and fill it up with something that will harden and make it more solid. Uh, don't just leave it empty. Uh, what you might want to use on that, uh, JB Weld or something like that, I think would work fine. Really, anything that would get in there and harden. You don't need any give on this. You don't really, really need the silicone or anything that's going to uh, be pliable. I think you want something solid. But that's it. Smith & Wesson 422. Nice gun. Shoots well. Recommend it. They don't make them anymore, but you can find them. And from what I can see, they really seem to be holding their value. Okay, every time you pick up a gun, check the action. Make sure it's unloaded. Keep your finger off the trigger to be ready to fire. Always know where your muzzle's pointed. Um, so hold the gun, turn your head away, and then think, okay, it's pointed there. Then turn it and just start thinking about, well, where's the, where's the gun pointed? Before you know it, it'll be second nature to you. Uh, it can be a little awkward for people at first, but uh, just give it a try. Okay, please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment. Um, those things are really, really important to the channel, uh, the way they rate everything. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day.